Well, thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure uh, to be here, and uh, I would first of all very much welcome this initiative uh, and the opp opportunity also the forum provides today, uh, which is the opportunity to bring together those uh, who are committed to developing economic relations uh, between Iran and Europe. The new opening in relations between Europe and Iran was made possible by the nuclear deal. This is a fact. And the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, GCPOA as we call it, uh, was a major political achievement and an excellent example of successful multilateral diplomacy. It demonstrated what we can do through cooperation rather than confrontation. Uh, it's uh, clear that the deal is of significant uh, uh, importance, particularly for the European Union, as we were the facilitators uh, of the talks, and we continue to play a major role when it comes to the implementation phase by coordinating the work of the Joint Commission. Now, for those who do not know, the Joint Commission consists of the six countries that negotiated, uh, Germany, France, UK, uh, Russia, China, and US, and Iran. Uh, Federica Mogherini is the, the coordinator, and um, at my level, we meet every three months uh, in, in Vienna, mostly, <coughs> and to oversee the implementation of the deal, both on the nuclear side, but also on the side of sanctions lifting. It's maybe also good to recall that where it all started, it actually started in 2003, and um, uh, I was then not working in Brussels, I was uh, working as a German diplomat for the then German foreign minister, and it was Joschka Fischer who was then Trump foreign minister of Germany, Chuck Straw for the UK, and Dominique de Villepin for France, who went to Tehran together in October 2003 to launch these negotiations. And I can tell you, if you had told me then that it would take 12 years uh, to come to an end of the negotiations, um, not sure what I would have uh, uh, done then. It was not, but this tells you that it was not an easy task to overcome uh, mistrust, which was one of the, the key problems we were facing on both sides, on both sides. And, uh, and reach an agreement. And also, if I look back uh, two years ago, I was practically living uh, in uh, a hotel in Vienna for the last months before we reached um, uh, the agreement, where we were negotiating with my, Amer uh, with my Iranian colleagues until uh, uh, early morning. And also, I recall that uh, back then, very few uh, predicted that we could reach a deal, and even fewer predicted that it would hold but we have proven them wrong. Uh, by the way, we also negotiated um, at one point in, in Zurich and, and also many, many times in Geneva. So also, um, as we are in Switzerland, uh, we've also benefit, uh, benefited from Swiss uh, hospitality. So we have proven all the critics wrong. The deal has been agreed, it's being implemented, and what is even more important, it's delivering on its objectives. Uh, I will not hide the fact from you that um, the deal is put in question uh, by some in recent months. And this is why one of my main messages today here is that um, um, we, uh, for the European Union, we absolutely stick to continued implementation of this deal, provided, of course, that the other side sticks to, um, to implementation. Um, there is um, uh, unevic 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 unequivocal, it's a very difficult English word, <laughs> support for this. Mm. And this was reaffirmed just two weeks ago uh, when we all were in New York for the UN General Assembly when Federica Mogherini, who is the, uh, not only the US High Representative, Vice President of the Commission, but also the Chair of the Joint Commission, when she chaired a ministerial meeting of the so-called E3 plus 3 uh, and, 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 and Iran. But uh, not only in New York, over the last month, our message has been very clear. This deal is working, it's delivering, and the world would be a lot less stable without it. Um, another message we have given is that not only that we fully support the GCPOA, but also that we expect continued implementation by all sides, by all parties. It's also good to recall that this is not a bilateral agreement, it's a multilateral agreement. It was endorsed by a, a, a Security Council resolution of the UN, and um, 
as Europeans, we will do everything to make sure it stays. Mm. Now, maybe allow me to go a little bit more in detail in terms of why we think the deal is so valuable, why it is of benefit to both Europe and Iran, and also what the European Union in particular is doing to support EU-Iran economic relations in particular, and I would also like to focus on the economic aspects here, also given uh, the fact that um, I'm speaking um, before a very important uh, business forum. The GCPA, as I said, is the result of 12 years of highly complex uh, negotiations, and as such it delivers on its prime object objective, which is to prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapons capability. This is a very clear uh, uh, message. And there is no credible, peaceful alternative uh, uh, to this agreement. It is based on very strong monitoring, verification, and transparency mechanism. It's the IAEA in Vienna, the so-called watchdog, that confirms um, uh, that Iran is in compliance. They have done this seven times by issuing reports which clearly state Iran is in compliance, actually eight times if you uh, count in the first report. Um, they have done um, several hundreds of uh, site visits, including unannounced uh, uh, inspections in the tw uh, uh, tw 12 um, first month. And um, uh, the, the result is very clear, Iran's nuclear program um, uh, is um, under tight control and uh, Iran is complying with its commitments. I w would also like to uh, point out that we have launched a civil nuclear cooperation uh, program with Iran under the so-called Annex 3 of the agreement. Also, uh, it's of benefit for both sides, but also to make the, the agreement more uh, durable and also which will also help to bring Iran into the international nuclear safety frameworks, which I think is a key issue also for Iran. Mm. The agreement um, does not belong to one single country. This is why it cannot be changed um, uh, unilaterally. Now, some critics say, and let me uh, and address this up front, that uh, the agreement is not delivering because it does not address Iran's regional uh, activities. And I think this is why it's very important uh, to understand what the agreement can do and what the agreement is about and what the agreement is not about. This is a non-proliferation agreement, nothing else. This is not a peace agreement, this is not about regional matters or any other issues. This does not mean, and I would also be clear on this, that uh, we are not concerned about some of um, Iran's activities in the region, also about the ballistic missile program, and we address this regularly with our interlocutors, and we feel that more needs to be done to find lasting, peaceful solutions for the, all the regional problems. But again, it's very important not to mix these things up. The GCPOA cannot be blamed for something that it is not supposed to address. Um, so we need, really need to be very clear that these issues need to be dealt with outside the scope of the GCPOA. And also, uh, uh, I'm absolutely convinced that we will not be in a better place to address any of these issues uh, by ditching the GCPOA. Uh, another issue is, and I won't want to uh, address this really also in very clear terms, is, um, um, and I think President Rouhani has gone public on this, that if the GCPOA did not survive, Iran uh, uh, could go back to enrichment and definitely this would bring further instability, including the risk of a regional nuclear arms race, especially at the time of volatility in the Middle East and the Gulf. And there is also no coincidence that some countries in the Gulf, when we talk to them, they have all have bilateral issues, but, uh, but um, uh, some of them have been very clear that they want the GCPA to be in place um, uh, um, and the international community definitely would not be in a better place to deal with any of these issues without the GCPOA in place. I think this is also very important to underline. Now, the nuclear side was one, or the nuclear question was one part of the deal. The other part, of course, was the comprehensive lifting of UN, EU, and US uh, secondary nuclear-related sanctions. Here, I think it's also important for me to uh, say up front that sanctions were never intended as a goal in themselves. They were always part 
of an approach to bring Iran back to the negotiating table uh, regarding its nuclear capabilities. As a result, Iran agreed to very significant restrictions on its nuclear development capabilities in exchange for sanctions lifting. We have always recognized and uh, uh, still do that it's very important that the benefits of the Iranian uh, uh, nuclear deal are directly felt by the Iranian people, but also by Iranian businesses. And I think this is necessary for the success of the deal, but it's also in the interest of the EU, its member states and economic operators. And this is also why I very much welcome initiatives such as the EU-Iran uh, Forum. As you probably uh, will recall, on 16 January 2016, the IEA verified the implementation by Iran of all the nuclear measures. And on the same day, mm, uh, the UN, EU, and secondary US economic and financial nuclear-related sanctions were, were lifted. As a result, new business opportunities with Iran have opened up. So implementation day, in a way, as we called it, uh, marks the opening uh, or reopening of uh, Iran to the world markets. And I would like to share some figures with you to show that this has um, been um, a, a very successful uh, track so far. Uh, trade between Iran and Europe increased 94% in the first half of 2017, if you compare it with the same time in 2016. The IMF reported that Iran's GDP grew by 7.4% in the first half of 2016-17, and the World Bank projects it will grow at an annual rate of 5.2% by 2020. Oil production and export have reached pre-sanction level, and new foreign investments are coming into the energy sector. Also, billions of outstanding oil debts have been paid back, and foreign direct investment is increasing. And here I quote the Iranian government uh, that uh, reported a growth of 55% compared to the previous uh, Iranian uh, year. But also trading goods has increased to just take the transport sector where some European car makers have doubled their sales, where joint ventures have been agreed for production in Iran and delivery of Airbus planes has started as well. So I'm just um, giving some examples uh, to, to be very concrete in terms of what has happened ever since um, uh, uh, we um, uh, uh, came out to a conclusion of the nuclear negotiations. For the European Union, we support economic cooperation uh, at the political level, but also at the policy level. Uh, I would like to recall the very successful visit uh, High Representative Federica Mogherini did together with seven uh, EU commissioners to Iran in mid-April 2016. I think this clearly expressed the political will at the highest level from the EU side to develop a gradual, comprehensive and constructive engagement with Iran across a number of very different areas. Uh, you may recall that on this occasion, a joint statement was agreed between uh, Federica Mogherini and uh, the uh, Iranian foreign minister, which covers all the future areas of uh, uh, cooperation. And this laid the ground um, for the renewed bilateral relations between the EU and Iran. Uh, we also have a political dialogue that is now taking place um, twice a year. Uh, at my level, and uh, we also hope to see soon an EU diplomatic representation in, in Tehran. Now, if I had to um, uh, talk about the areas of cooperation where we work together, this is really a, um, uh, um, uh, this is really uh, 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 quite a lot of areas, starting from microeconomic dialogue, trade, investment talks, to economy, science, education, transport, migration, environment, energy, humanitarian issues uh, uh, to human rights. So it's really a vast array of um, uh, uh, activities. But beyond the political level, technical meetings take place on a regular level between the EU and Iranian ministries. We discuss renewable energy, climate change, uh, EU internal market procedures, for example, for food safety, railway, maritime transport, customs, etc. Um, now, the um, uh, establishment of a well-functioning banking services is, of course, key to the integration of Iran 
into the international economy. And as the European Union, we are um, uh, doing everything we can to provide better clarity on the regulatory framework in place to the EU's financial and banking systems. You probably are familiar with that. We have provided a 50 pages guideline on the new situation after we lifted um, the nuclear-related sanctions. And together with our member states, we have been engaging the private sector, uh, but not only in Europe, also with uh, third countries. Oops. In, in, in the world. Mm. Now, obviously, the European Union or any EU government is not able to force banks or other businesses to take certain decisions in commercial matters, but we continue to reach out to the financial sector and to our banking system to provide as much clarity uh, as we can. It's also worth recalling that we have already witnessed a significant uh, improvement in our banking relationships and I'm focusing on that because I know in the regular joint commissions I chair the issues of course of banking um, of banks being cautious to engage is a, is a recurrent issue on the agenda so just to share with you that a number of European banks have started to facilitate transactions and are establishing correspondent banking relationships with Iranian banks and that more and more European banks are providing payment channels to their customers and are conducting uh, transactions. We have more than 30 Iranian banks that are reconnected to SWIFT, and more than 200 international banks have started correspondent relations with Iranian banks. Large credit lines have recently opened, um, also many from Asian countries. Um, there have been challenges. Uh, in what uh, uh, we see as a gradual process of reconnection to the world economy. And let me say there are also things Iran needs to do, um, and in this respect we welcome uh, all efforts to address the very important issue of anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism. It's critical to adjust to current international banking standards and comply with the international regulatory standards in the field of financial services. We encourage Iran to continue these efforts and we stand ready to provide support where we can. And this is particularly in the framework, in the very important framework of the Financial uh, Action Task uh, Force, the so-called FFATF. And it's also clear that after a long time, when Iran was cut off from international trading and banking, uh, it was clear that it would take time uh, for the international business community to adjust to the new reality of post-implementation day. As a sign of confidence, and uh, I would like to underline this, in our future financial and economic relations, the European Commission has proposed to allow the European Investment Bank operate uh, in Iran in the future. All 28 EU member state governments, um, which come together in the EU uh, Council, have welcomed the expansion of the uh, EU's economic relationship with Iran, and we also very much support Iran's WTO accession and uh, in, in general reintegration in the global economy. This is a very clear message we are not only giving, but this is a very clear message we are also translating uh, into practice. Mm. Work on full uh, and strict implementation of the GCPA by all sides needs to continue. Again, this was my message from the beginning. This is uh, the message I would like to, uh, to end with. Maybe I should add that at a time when we are trying to tackle the threat arising from North Korea's unchecked nuclear capacities, uh, I think it's time to recall the critical value of the GCPOA in preventing nuclear proliferation. And the message also we have been given, been giving loud and clear was that uh, the world does not need a second nuclear proliferation crisis. One is already uh, one, one too many. So once more, the EU has invested a great deal in this agreement. It's taking a very long time to do it. Uh, it's now uh, done, it's delivering, it's delivering on its objectives, and we will honor it as long as uh, Iran does. Um, you could also say it in very simple words, Pacta sunt servanda. I would like to thank the European Iran Forum for this initiative, um, uh, for this um, very interesting uh, program, for having brought all of you together. I very much regret that I cannot stay for the day because I have to go on uh, to Geneva, but I thank you for having invited me and for having given me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Mm. Mm.